So this video is going to be a little bit different than my other videos. My other videos are educational and I talk about my opinion on things, but this is going to be like a historical video because I'm going to talk about what led to me living in vehicles. It was out of true desperation at the time and it did save me. Um, I couldn't walk, I had a lot of injuries, I was disabled, and so I needed some way to stay alive. Um, at the time, I also had a lot of other, other injuries. I was in gymnastics for years, so my shoulders need surgeries and they were very weak. It was hard for me even to steer my vehicle. Um, lots of things led up to it. Um, a lot of people ask about my family and my family had their own problems. My mom was like in and out of prison. She did a lot of drugs and stuff. She's doing well now and she's a great person. So don't really judge her. She's awesome. But um, she wasn't around. And then my dad, he was doing his own thing. He has a lot of debt. Very smart man though. He's mechanical genius. He's awesome. Very cool people. Like I have great parents, but they were having their own hardships. So I was on my own when I was young. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what led to me living in vehicles. First of all, I had a pretty cool life. I was a lifeguard. I was a gymnastics instructor. Um, I had a great time. I surfed every single day. I had like the best girlfriend in the world. Um, pretty much the most amazing life you could ever imagine. Um, I moved out when I was about 17 and a half to my girlfriend's house because she lived next door. Um, I preferred it over there. I had my bicycle and some other things there. So I was like, eh, I'll just go over there now. So, um, um, over time I saved up and I bought a van again, a Volkswagen van again. And the main point of me having that thing was so I could go on surf trips up and down the coast. And I was going to load all my kiteboards and all my surfboards into it. And then I would leave for weeks at a time. And I was planning on sleeping in it. That was the whole point of it. Um, it was a stealth van. I had limo tint. Um, I also rebuilt the engine from scratch. Um, it had a new transmission because it failed on me. And lots of other things. The Vanigans kind of suck. So I would not recommend having one of those. But it was um, originally for just surf trips. Um, over time though, I had some injuries. In gymnastics, I tore a ligament in my foot, the plantar fascia. Um, and then I started to develop a nerve disease and I couldn't walk very far. Um, it was a slow and gradual progression and uh, for quite a few months I couldn't walk at all and the van was just sitting outside. Um, I was a detriment to my girlfriend's finances and she was very smart and awesome and I wanted her to go to school and continue doing what she's doing. And I didn't want to be a leech on everybody and I hated it because she was paying rent, she was feeding me, it was really tough times. So what I did is I moved into the van and um, that made it so that I wasn't, you know, hurting anybody's life financially. Um, at first it was out of desperation. When I moved into the van originally, I couldn't walk for more than a city block. Um, the van did not have a toilet. Um, I was on the streets and it was tough. Like it was really tough when you cannot walk very far. Both of my shoulders were torn. I tore off the cartilage so I couldn't fight for myself if somebody was trying to jump me. Um, food was kind of hard because I didn't have much money. So I did go to homeless shelters a lot. Um, I predominantly went to the younger, like the youth shelters. Um, so that's why I know so much about those crackheads and stuff. And that's why I always share stories on here because I had to deal with them for a very long time. Um, but when it was all said and done, um, about three years went by, I was in that van for one year and then I got a free RV from my mom and my mom got it from a friend that was going to jail. So we got it for a super discount price. Um, my mom brought the RV up and then about two weeks later she got arrested. So she was out of the picture and I just had a shoulder surgery when I had the nerve disease. So I couldn't use my legs. I couldn't use this shoulder because it was in a sling. And then this shoulder I couldn't use because it was still torn. So I mean, I literally had to eat off of like, um, my table. Like I'd have food laid out that my friends would put and I'd eat with my mouth and I could not drive my RV. People had to come and then drive it for me. So I'm talking desperate times and that RV broke down. Okay. I, I remember one time after the surgery, the brake master cylinder started leaking and the brakes went out and this was re right after a surgery and I had no food or money and I was like literally screwed. I was almost running out of water at sometimes I was drinking out of hoses wherever I could find them. Um, I didn't take showers for months. I mean, I'm talking grungy. Like this was real intense. And when my nerve disorder that I talk about, just because I couldn't walk very far, it looked like I couldn't walk very far. Even though I look really young, my feet were black all the way up to my knees. Um, there was ulcers, like these things were getting infected on and off. Um, it was really desperate times. So 
anyways, what I did to get out of that is that I wrote a bunch of books, a bunch of medical books, and you guys might have seen them on my website under the About Me section. Um, I wrote Plantar Fasciitis Survival Guide. I wrote the Chronic Injury Survival Guide. I wrote um, the Urethromalacia Survival Guide. I just I had all these different books on how to fix all the things that I had. And that's what I had was Urethromalacia and Plantar Fasciitis and um, lots of other injuries, though, from having those. Because when your posture is messed up from not walking for a long time, your hips, your back, your knees, everything go out of whack and then chronic things develop. And that's really hard to get out of because when you can't move and then you get more injuries from not moving, it makes it even harder to move. So at one point, like I said, I couldn't use any of my limbs that well. It hurt to do anything. So um, it did give me a lot of time to read and I have a local library with all the books that I ever needed and I have access to the internet with the laptop I had at the time. So what I did is I educated myself as much as possible. I read everything I possibly could. Um, and that means like getting the hard to read books and then getting a dictionary and figuring it out because you can't just like learn things on your own. You need to find out the definitions of things and then your brain needs to rewire and understand what those books mean. Some people just read books and they're like, oh yeah, that was really interesting. And it's like, did you really absorb it? Is it, is it actually utilizable? Like, can you, is there any purpose of learning? Um, I am really against reading books and learning things that you're not going to use. So um, I read, you know, mostly medical stuff and I figured out ways to fix my problems and I made my own treatments. And so that worked out great and I'm so glad that I did obviously because I can walk now and I don't have all those issues anymore. I have some and I can't walk excessively but um, I'm doing great. I can work out. I can bicycle every day. I feel like I'm having a normal life now and I'm, on, I'm off of SSI. I, when I did have urethromalacia I was deemed as permanently and severely disabled by the state or federal government, I'm sorry. And so I was on SSI and that helped a lot too. That was around the same time when I f wrote my first book. Um, that's when everything started working again. I could actually pay for medical treatments. I could actually see physical therapists and use their, you know, treatments to actually get better. Um, I did a lot of different things. Um, most of the things though were uncurable and so I had to create my own treatments and that's what is in my books. But um, things like shoulder surgeries, you can't do that inside an RV. You need to have a surgeon do it, and that's why I needed money for. A lot of people always said, can I help you with this? Can I help you with that? And I was like, I would tell them, look, I've never tried drugs or alcohol. What I need now is money so I can fix these things. I need books so I know how to fix them, and I found ways to do it. So I really did need, you know, monetary help, um, and some people do. But predominantly on the streets, it's not that way. I was the only guy almost in every sh single homeless shelter that actually could use help. Everybody else there was like little victims and like poor me, I'm doing drugs. And, and these people though, they jump other people. You think they're so sweet when you're in the shelter. They're nice, you can talk to them and then they complain and then they tell you their story and then you feel bad for them. And then you find out that they jump someone or they stab someone and you're like, huh, wow, I don't feel bad for them at all anymore. And then it happens over and over and over. And then you become like me. People think I'm an asshole, but you know what? I've seen enough times and I know that these people are out to get me. So that's just the way it is. Anyways, back to my little story. Um, things got easier and easier than I started my drone photography business. I um, started building more websites. What I'm doing now is just for fun. Um, I really do want to help you guys. I just want, I know a lot about RVs and van living. Um, I was forced into it, so I had to find out how to do it with the most limited resources possible. I mean, when you can't use your limbs and you're still living in a vehicle that's breaking down and you have no money, you really know how to do it, all right? Like, I've been in situations that I did not think I was going to get out to, out of, and I would just sit there and stare at my wall. And I'm like, how the fuck am I going to do this? I can barely walk. My RV is broken. The cops keep... It would be one thing after the other. And so... um I don't know, and all I had was myself for a long, long time. Um, SSI helped, but I had to go to court three times. I had to get an attorney to win it. The doctors that were um, there referenced for medical information on the court were idiots, and I was like correcting everything they said. They didn't even understand my disorder. They didn't know shit. So I had to sit there and be like, no, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. No, you're, you, I need a new doctor. So it was always this, I mean, it's just hoop jumping. You always have to come back, come back, you know, fill out more papers, 
go to another court case, find a new attorney. It's just all this shit and it, it busy body government bullshit. Um, it was nice to have that help, but man, it was a pain in the ass. I don't even, I don't even like thinking about those days. It was such a pain. Um, it was very hard to go to a court when you can barely walk too. Um, anyways, and they wouldn't believe me because I look young. And I was like, look, I got this skin in this face because I didn't do drugs and alcohol like you guys did. Cause most people drink and like, they're like, wow, wow. How do you look so young? And I'm like, because I don't do what you do. And it's not that they're bad people. All right. They're very helpful. I love, I mean, it's awesome, but do not expect different results when you do something differently. Um, if you eat crap food and you smoke, guess what? Your skin's going to look like shit and what, what people look like shit criminals. So you're going to be prejudged. Um, I'm not trying to say that I'm better or worse. I'm just saying that for survival means people are going to judge you and you need to, you know, increase your chances of survival. Anyways, back to my story. I'm sorry. I always go on tangents. Um, now I'm in a Toyota RV and it's worked really well for me. Um, this one's seen me, seen me for about four years or has seen my life for about four years now. And, um, um, it's great. It's super fuel efficient. It never breaks down. Um, the roof never leaks like my old RV, like that van, it doesn't break down. Volkswagen vans suck. I had that engine brand new. I did everything to it. I did it on my own and it was solid and things would still break. I do not recommend a Volkswagen van again. Um, and so now I'm just kind of chilling in the RV life. Everything in California is overpriced. If you look at um, the apartments around here, you're going to spend $1,300 to $1,700 for a one bedroom apartment. It's nuts. And um, I don't want my money to go to that. I want to save it just in case emergencies happen. Um, and if I, if for some reason I'm not going to be in a van or RV and I'm ready to move out of this thing at any moment, I'm not stuck on this. I'm not a vehicle dweller. Like I don't identify myself to any term. I don't care. This is what's advantageous or has advantages right now. And it's efficient, but if anything changes, I'm, I can drop this instantly. Okay. Um, if I need to go to Thailand and rent a room for like $300 a month and just live off of cheap food there for a while, and then just do like visa runs, I can live cheaply elsewhere. I have backup plans. I'm not just stuck here. Um, I really like that flexibility. My car, I can get rid of and sell it anytime I want. It holds its value. This RV holds its value. I can get rid of it whenever I want. So I'm not really an RV or van dweller like per se, even though I've been in it for seven years. I'm ready to do whatever's most efficient. Um, yeah, I hope I answered all of your questions. You guys wanted to know like why I'm in the van, the history that did, led to me doing it. And in on, all honesty, I'd probably still be in an apartment with that girlfriend or another girlfriend and I'd just be riding my bike going to work. I'd probably be coaching gymnastics still. Um, I probably wouldn't have wrote those medical books because I really didn't care. My original plans was I was going to be adventure tour guide. And, um, I do like to build things even at that time though, but I wasn't going to be writing books on it or doing anything special like that. I really just wanted to be outside on a tropical Island surfing all day. Um, in all, all honesty, I would much rather be surfing every day. Anyways, I can't surf anymore because my shoulders are messed up. So I just bicycle a lot. But um, anyways, yeah, that's a little bit of my story. So just so you guys understand where I'm coming from. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening if you listen to this whole thing. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.